Security analyst Chidi Omeje joins us now to look at the desirability or otherwise of the mercenary push and how it could impact on the anti-terror war. Chidi, thanks for joining us on Newsday. Now, do you agree with those who are advising the Kaduna state governor to err on the side of caution concerning the importation of foreign mercenaries to fight terrorists in Nigeria? Thank you for the opportunity. Of course, I... I share in that particular, you know, position, uh, and and I, I quite understand, you know, from uh, the point from which uh, the governor is talking. He's talking from the point of, uh, you know, frustration and despair. Uh, but you also agree with me that uh, frustration and despair is not the right response for a leader in, at a time like this. Um, I think we have come to a point where we need to factor in what we call crisis communication in, you know, uh, uh, in leadership, and of course you know, in solving security problems. Uh, crisis, uh, crisis communication also, uh, you know, talks about what we call conflict-sensitive communication. If you don't communicate properly as a leader or as uh, one of the, secure, uh, as one of the uh, uh, people who are trying to find solutions, you will end up <coughs> aggravating the situation. So what the governor had done in, in, the, in the manner with which he had communicated is to um, actually, you know, pour... Uh, or rather to exacerbate the situation. Now, if you, uh, if you come out in the public to make such uh, you know, uh, pronouncements, you are not encouraging the military, Nigerian military, the gallant Nigerian military. You are not telling the military that they, that they are um, up to the task, uh, even when we know that they had done all they could within the, power, within the limits they could do it. Uh, so we, I, I want to say, say it loud and clear, that leaders, especially our political leaders, must know when to draw lines. You don't come out to make such, a, you know, explosive positions on the air just to appear good in the, uh, in the side. So that's not how to, uh, you know, um, solve situation. You are rather just putting uh, petroleum into a raging fire. Um, Mr. Omeje, it seems that a lot of very frustrated statements have been made in the last couple of weeks by a couple of individuals. Um, most importantly, um, from the Minister of Transportation, we know that when the bombs went off on the Kaduna trains, he came out to say that the reasons why security had not been beefed up around then was due to bureaucratic bottlenecks. And we also have heard from other uh, stables of individuals calling for uh, Nigerian citizens to take up arms themselves. What do you say about uh, personal arm, uh, people taking up arms themselves or arming uh, a small militia, so to speak? Uh, what I say to all those responses is uh, that, they, you see, we should not appear to be, uh, you know, hysterical about the situation. We must sit back to take stock. We are not going to appear so desperate to the point that somebody will be advocating that we everybody pick up arms. We have not come to a stage in this country where we can make such uh, advocacy. Even in the some Western part of the Western world, not every, not all of them, you know, are in tune with such. Not a talk of a country like ours, where we know that uh, we are not really very, very. We have not gone. To, uh, we have not really, quote unquote, matured to do to. To, to do that. So uh, to me, it's, um, it's more like chaos, asking for, chaos, you know, well, uh, asking for um, self-help. It, it does not show a good, way, a good way to solve the problem. What we should be talking about now is how do we synergize efforts between and among our security agencies, the military, uh, the military security intelligence and response agencies? How do we synergize their efforts? How do we ensure that every uh, you know, part of these uh, security and response agencies are doing the work they're supposed to do, so that we do not, uh, you know, leave the entire job to a particular institution. So that is why it, it's quite, you know, uh, puzzling that you, you could see um, political leaders coming to demonize and denigrate the efforts of the military. Uh, you know, to me, it's, it's, um, it's, it's incredible. What we should be talking about is how do we ensure that um, you know, every, every se segment of these uh, ag uh, government agencies are doing what they ought to do right. And of course, the people also have a role to play. Information is key in, in all of this. And the people's cooperation, uh, you know, we have to be able to galvanize public support for our security forces. We have to be able to, you know, with confidence, bring confidence so that people know that, yeah, we 
uh, our agencies are not asleep. We have, we have seen some lapses. We have seen some, you know, some areas where things would have been done better. But that does not show. That does not mean that those who have put their lives online are, you know, are, are sleeping on duty. I, I do not agree with that. What I rather think is that uh, the situation have gone to a point where uh, it has to be a deliberate. You know, effort at uh, statecraft to, to manage the situation, to manage our information, uh, you know, thing, to manage our public support effort, to manage, you know, uh, what we call synergy of effort between and among security agencies. This is what we should be talking about now. This is not time for despair. It's not time for, you know, a, a historical response. It's time for, you know, to, to sit back and articulate it to make sure we get on top of the situation. We can't, we can't um, let our country slip out of our hands at a, at a time like this. But Chidi, some would say it's worked before. Why not use this again? 2014, case in point, whereby there were talks about South African mercenaries. And according to Mohamed, Mamu also said that Ukrainian mercenaries were being brought into fight insurgency. And some would say that was some of the best times as they were heavily decimated. You're speaking about the Nigerian military and the fact that it might demoralize them. But in the immediate protection of lives and property, is not being carried out by this government today and by the military forces. If we get people to protect lives and property first before we start thinking about people's feelings, is that not the right way to go? Um, I mean, on the first value, you are right. It's, it's, I mean, the, the situation we find ourselves, the, the, the natural response is to say, oh, let's stabilize the situation first. Yeah, that, that is understandable. I mean, you, you, you put it rightly when you said that as far back as 2014 or thereabout, we had mercenaries from South Africa, you know, helping out. But um, I think the situation at the end right now, uh, you, you do not have just uh, in, uh, terrorism in the, in the North, as we talked about, as, as, it were, as it were in 2014. We have, you know, a, a multifaceted security fractions across the geopolitical zones. And this means, what this goes to show is that even if you bring um, mercenaries, you could, you could just uh, deal with a particular theater of operation. But we're talking about the fact that there are underlying factors for, to all of this. So how do we address them? Even if, let me tell you, even if you bring the entire armed forces of the war, of the war you may not be able to, to, to end the situation. Even if you, uh, um, you know, uh, bring the mercenaries, what should, be, what, what should happen now is for us to understand that the situation has gone beyond, uh, you know, uh, the, the ordinary, as, as, as in, you know, we could just fight, up, shoot our guns through. It's not just that. It's not about putting the, the, um, much, much uh, boots on the ground. That is, a, that is a factor. But there are also other underlying factors that need to be dealt with. We need to deal with the issue of how do communities uh, react to that? How do they, those guys, I do not, nobody have been able to tell us exactly who they are. We have not put a name to this, these terrorists in the Northwest. All like the way we had, we have Boko Haram or ISWAP in the Northeast. Who are these people perpetrating this crime, uh, this evil in Northwest and North Central? Are they, is it an organized, um, you know, a bandit or terror, terrorist network or just, you know, uh, economic plunderers who are out there trying to take advantage of the situation? Or are there, you know, cross-border bandits from other, other part of the, of, of the, uh, the continent? Or are there... You know, machine, uh, are there organized criminal gangs trying to, you know, uh, destroy our country? So we should be able to put our hands to all of this before we can even say we are going to bring a machinery. You might end up, if you bring a machinery right now, um, it could help. But the point is that the Nigerian Armed Forces are saying that, look, they don't really need machinery now. They can handle the situation if we provide the, uh, the enabling environment. The enabling environment here includes, you know, increasing, putting more boots on the ground, and of course, putting more eyes in the air, talking about the, the Air Force, and then, of course, um, synergizing there for bringing the police to do their work also. And then, of course, activating our, our, our intelligence assets. All of this has to be synchronized. All of this has to work together. Then, of course, there has to be the political will to be able to implement all of this. And the people, of course, also must not show any kind of despair. You don't show despair. Look, take, for instance, look at what is happening in Ukraine. Do you know that we're talking now, Ukra Ukrainians who had earlier crossed over to Poland are coming back to Ukraine in spite of the fact that war is still raging. This tells you that they are, this, they are telling you that, look, we're not going to despair. We're going, this is our country, we're not fight it. We're going to stand, stand up to the evil uh, that has come upon us. So what I'm advocating actually is that we have to find a way to give a ground 
support for our fighting forces. We have to uh, we have to um, advise our political leaders to be um, circumspect in the kind of uh, uh, communication they, they put out through out there because sometimes they are, they are, they are, they are, what they say to us end up you know putting uh, petroleum and the raging fire. So that's what I'm talking about. So. Yes, um, you, could, you, could, you could argue strongly about mercenaries, but the point is that we have not, we, we have not come to a point where the armed forces of Nigeria have said, look, we are, we are overwhelmed totally, we need help. They are telling you now that they can do it if we give them what they need. Now, instead of importing mercenaries, the Arawa Consultative Forum has suggested that the authorities should look into the possibility of utilizing volunteers such as ex-servicemen and women, the civilian task forces and even hunters in the fight against terrorism. Will this work? What's your take on this? Yeah, those, 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 are, what we call, those are complementary efforts that can be, you know, can be put together. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, nations have what you call reservoirs, armed forces reservoirs, especially those who are retired. You can call them in to join forces when you have situations like this. It's not a bad idea. So this is, this, this is why we are calling on, uh, you know, maybe probably the office of the National Security Advisor to, 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 lead, to take lead in, this, in, in at times like this. They should be able to give us a clear cut, you know, structure of how we can go about this. Yes, we can pull. We can. We can. We can organize even the local vigilantes. Look at what the civil, uh, civilian JTF are doing in Northeast. Look at how 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 um, effective they have, they have been or, or true. They've always helped the military because they know the, the the terrain. They know the people. They know the, they, are, they are in the communities. So if we're able to pull our communities together, if we're able to pull our youth together, the vigilantes together, the the those guys who have retired in the past, the reserve as. Uh, the reserve, as we've called it here, yeah, bring them together, they can, they can complement the efforts. The important thing is that we have to um, you know, show the world that we are capable of handling the situation. We can, well, I think we can do it. Uh, but, but if we come out with such, you know, such you know, uh, remarks, um, I think the, uh, remarks that um, you know, we're going to, uh, going to bring in, the, the whole world will you know, sit back to say, oh, really? You can't handle your internal situation and you have armed forces. So how, how about that? Well, we'd like to say thank you for joining the program this afternoon, uh, Chidi Omeje. Your uh, input was very uh, useful.